Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. I do hope you can hear me well and that you can see the screen that I'm sharing. I will um, be starting this webinar now. I know that uh, people are still joining, um, but to make sure that we can make the most of the hour that we have uh, set aside for this webinar, I would like to start on time. If you have any technical difficulties during this webinar, please do use the chat uh, box to let us know so we can uh, hopefully fix it as soon as uh, it happens. If uh, we're not audible, if you can't hear us well, also let us know so we can uh, try and make it work uh, as best as possible. This webinar is going to be recorded and so the recording will be available after uh, the call, well, uh, later, probably tomorrow. Um, so you can absolutely um, look at and uh, listen to it again. Okay, so I hear that not everyone can see my screen, which is strange because I am sharing my screen. Okay, so apparently that's solved. Wonderful. So let's get started. Again, a warm welcome to this webinar. Thank you for joining us. I can see there's quite a few people from Europe joining us at this early hour. So thank you so much for that. I hope you all settled comfortably with a nice cup of coffee. Uh, we certainly are. <laughs> I am uh, here with my colleague uh, Elif. Uh, Elif has recently joined Amphoi to work with uh, Yakut on BSCI. So uh, very welcome, uh, Elif, and uh, thank you for agreeing to do this webinar together with me. So let me perhaps uh, start by showing you what we want to cover in the next hour with you. So of course the main topic today is putting SDGs into practice and what this means is that I would like to walk you through the two main documents that we have uh, published so far on SDGs um, and really to walk you through why we have them what uh, is in the documents and how you can use those documents and also to give you an idea of what else we will be planning to do this year. But then also we thought it would be interesting to give you some country perspectives of what they do on SDGs. What are the pushes there, the polls, who is working on SDGs in these countries um, and what are the drivers? And for this we have uh, Natasha Majumdar joining us uh, from our India office. Um, and we have Elif uh, for Turkey. Uh, so we're hoping that's going to be informative for you. Um, and then we would like to talk to you also about how can we start sharing stories uh, so that uh, all members can help each other understand SDGs, but also to help everyone of how can you start working on SDGs and implement them in your company. So that's uh, for the for the, the next hour. Um, if you have any questions, please use the questions option in uh, the screen that you have probably on the right side of your screen. Uh, just open that up and type your questions there. We'll try to monitor that as closely as we can um, and answer the questions as they come in. All right, so let's get started. Putting SDGs into practice, as I said, we published two documents last year, one in September, which was a technical document, uh, which actually uh, was a mapping document of everything that uh, Amphori does in terms of approaches, uh, position papers, tools, uh, initiatives, um, and mapping that against the SDGs. So it was a rather technical document, but it was a very important first step for us to understand exactly how do we align with the SDGs. The second document was published in December, so it's possible not everyone has seen it, but it was also, um, there was a link in the invitation to this webinar, which was a guidance document. Um, and that document really was meant for our members to look at, okay, what's uh, training, what uh, reading, what tools are available for me to actually implement SDGs into my organization. So we'll walk you through those two documents. But first, I'd like to set the stage by, um, you may have seen this, but may not, but the UN has declared the next 10 years, the decade of action to deliver the sustainable development goals. 
Um, I think it's no surprise that they've done so. I mean, we only have 10 years left to achieve the SDGs. Um, and as said by Antonio Guterres, he said, we need all hands on deck. And this is really a key point. We need everyone to work on the SDGs and to advance towards meeting the SDGs. So we need not just uh, the governments, we need not just the, the civil society, not just businesses, not just individuals, but we need all of them and we need all of them to work together. Um, so this of course brings us to the key point that collaboration really is the only way to drive systemic change that will get us to meeting the SDGs. And of course, as Amphori, we work very much along collaboration. It's what we're founded on. It is what drives us. It's what really makes our success is all of our members coming together and creating change. And it will not be any different for the SDGs. Our vision is fully aligned with the Global Sustainable uh, Development Agenda for 2030. As you know, our vision is a world where all trade delivers social, environmental and economic benefits for everyone. So we are very much, um, it's not just supporting, but we are built on the SDGs. So what does that mean actually, uh, in terms of what people can expect from Amphori? Because it is of course well understood that our contribution is only indirect. The direct contribution comes from you, from our members who actually use our tools and services in their supply chain. So what we find uh, is important for us to deliver as part of contributing to meeting the SDGs is really to measure and increase the relevance of our work um, on the SDGs. So making sure that whatever it is that we deliver to our members has a relevance to the SDGs. Uh, of course, as a organization that supports members, it is our duty to raise the awareness of members on the SDGs and the, the 2030 agenda and to support members as well in measuring their contribution to relevant SDGs of course when it is linked to their participation in Amphori tools and services. But of course it's also important for us to measure the impact of our um, services and tools. Um, why? It's because you don't just want to do uh, an audit for example, you want to know what that audit actually changes uh, in a positive way in the supply chain. And then also as a group where many companies come together, I think it is also our contribution to facilitate the sharing of knowledge, best practice and approaches on sustainable development uh, within this network of members to make sure that everyone can help each other, support each other and learn from each other. So let's start with the technical paper, which is the mapping document. So this really is, again, the document where a detailed mapping of approaches, tools and services against the SDG was performed. I will now switch my screen to uh, the actual document. I think it's uh, better to actually go through the document with you rather than to look at slides. So hang on for just a moment. I hope you can see the change of my screen. It might take a bit uh, for some people to uh, see the screen change, but you should see now a blue document that says Amphori and the Sustainable Development Goals. It is also available on our website um, on the page uh, and SDGs and Business, so you can always find it there as well. I am going to scroll down and show you what that document looks like and how you can use it and what is contained. The first two pages really outline how Amphori as an association in terms of vision, mission, how we work aligns with SDG. So this is really more high level of how our vision and our mission actually support uh, the SDGs. Um, it's also outlining um, how we actually approach collaboration, as collaboration is key to achieving the SDGs. Our, co our contribution that I just um, outlined is also in this document, but in a little bit more detail. And then also you can find there um, what of our approaches, our tools, our initiatives were actually included in the mapping exercise. So those two 
uh, first pages are really important to read. So do you have a full understanding of um, what is the basis of Amphori versus the SDGs? Now, I'm scrolling further down to how to use this document. Now, of course, I'm going to explain you now, but this is something you can go back to um, at a later stage, at any stage that you would like, to look at what it does and what it doesn't do. Because, of course, um, it doesn't do everything. Uh, it's just a technical paper that you can use, um, but it doesn't really look at uh, measuring the contribution. Uh, this is something that we're going to embark on this year you know that we're building a new platform and of course that will give us a lot more um, opportunities to start uh, identifying and uh, building reports to measure uh, your contribution towards the SDGs. So that is work that we will be doing uh, starting this year. So how do you use it then? You use it if you want to know through your work with Amphori, which SDGs you touch upon. So you can, for example, search in this document uh, for a specific tool that you use with us, a specific initiative that you have signed up, and it's all clearly outlined in the document what that initiative does for a specific uh, SDG. Um, I know of one member who actually did this in a presentation to his board. Um, he basically looked at this document and distilled okay, I use BCI, and thereby I touch upon these SDGs. So that is just one uh, small example that I uh, know of. In this mapping document will be updated if and when our, our tools or services are expanded and touch upon other SDGs. So this is not a static document for the next 10 years, for the decade of action. This document hopefully will evolve as we expand um, our reach into the SDGs, okay? And uh, at any point that you or anyone who is uh, not an Amphori member, I know that this webinar also has uh, uh, external stakeholders, so welcome to you as well, of course. Um, it's important that we have a dialogue on this. So if you have any comments on this document, if there, you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we would love to have a discussion with you. So I'm just going to scroll down to a very um, well-covered SDG, because that's the easiest to, to perhaps uh, link to and explain, which is number eight, decent work and economic growth. I think uh, we all can um, guess that this is the one where a lot of overlap is. You can also see it on the the, the, the mapping icons that were shown at the beginning on the slide. This, of course, is what BSCI is about. And that, therefore, there's a lot of overlap here and a lot of linkages to the SDG. So how does this work? Where we have been able to identify a target where we can really link into relatively directly, we will have put it at the top and then following exactly what is covered. And so we have here um, BSCI um, and what exactly is covered in BSCI for SDG 8, for example. Then it follows what tools and resources are there. There's, of course, a system manual, but we also have an Amphori position paper on, for example, child labor, the new child labor law in India. So just to give you a full mapping again of what we do, and how it relates to a specific SDG, and in this case, even to a specific target. So I'm just going to scroll down further. There's another target here, target 8.7. So again, followed by what we cover exactly. Again, there's a position paper here, but there's also some explanation on the audit process. Um, there are, is also some explanation on what training modules and guidelines have been made available to support target 8.7. Moving further down, there's also target 8.8. .8. And then for example, if we move further down to, tar uh, to goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production, this is of course where the biggest overlap is with BPI, which is the environmental initiative at Amphori. 
So again, here there, we always start with a little explanation of what is covered here, what might be some of the uh, main um, uh, topics within this uh, SDG. And then we start looking at, okay, how are we linked? So again, it is mainly on 4 BPI here, as you can see on screen. Here again, it is at target level. So here you can see target 12.2 and followed by what is covered in BPI. What are the checkpoints? What training have we in place uh, to support then either members or producers on this topic? Scrolling down, you can see target 12.4, 12.5. Again, what is covered here in terms of either checkpoints, tools or training? If you're looking for something more specifically in this document, for example, you work particularly on water, I would suggest you just use the, um, the search function that you have in any document and you just type in water and you go through the document and you can easily find back what um, Amphoric covers when it comes to water and how you can either um, work with us on water or maybe you're already um, a part of BPI, for example, and you already do things with us on water. So use the search function because I'm aware that this is a rather long document and with a lot of detail, um, which is not a bad thing because it means that we, we do a lot uh, with you. So you do a lot in your supply chain, but use the search function if you are looking for specific topics, specific issues, um, and then you can easily find back uh, what it is that uh, Amphori offers and what you do with us. Another example I quickly want to show is um, climate actions, which is SDG 13, um, mainly because sometimes, and actually this is the only SDG, we cannot link directly with a target or an indicator, but we do link with the SDG holistically. So this is one of the examples where you can see there are no targets or indicators um, in the document, but there is a narrative of what for example, BPI does on climate action. Uh, so we don't always have a direct link to a target or an indicator. Sometimes it's more a narrative versus the SDG. If you want to have an overview of what that looks like across the SDGs, at the end of the document, we do have that overview in uh, the alignment summary. And there you can see by goal, if it's we cover the goal, do we cover also a one or more targets? And do we cover one or more indicators? So as you can see for goal three, it is the goal and a target. For goal four, it's a goal and it's three targets. And then for five, it actually is um, the goal, three targets and also two indicators. And so this is uh, perhaps an easy overview should you want to uh, use this in your communication externally or with your management. This might be a really good um, annex for you to use to have that very easy, quick overview. So this is um, the mapping document. So I'm just going to quickly pause here and see if there are any questions. I don't see any questions come in over the question, so I am just going to then go back to our slide quickly before I go to the next document. So the second document I want to quickly um, walk through with you is the guide that was the most recent um, publication in December. And it's really a guide to help Amphoria member companies find their way across the, the many existing materials and tools available on the SDGs. So we've tried to look at what really is most relevant for our members to look at. Um, and, I've, and the document also indicates of what are the absolute must do's or reads and what is uh, very interesting, but it will take you a, a bit more time and effort to do so. So really use that guide also in my, with in mind, what is your role in your company and what do you want to do with the SDGs? Uh, are you just interested in understanding them a bit better? 
then just look at what is the basic. If you are tasked to really try and, and implement and integrate the SDGs into your company, then we would advise you to look at everything that we have in this guide. The guide also allows you to skip steps. It is built on uh, five steps that doesn't come from us, it comes from the SAG Compass that has been around for quite a while. But really, um, this, this guide is useful for anyone, someone who starts from scratch, you can start with step one. If you're already advanced here, you can look for whatever step you are at and start with that. So don't feel that you have to go through all the steps, but just look at the step that is either relevant for you or most interesting to you. So again, I'm going to switch screens and look at the document online. Again, it is available online. It was uh, a link in the uh, invitation for this webinar. So I hope you, uh, you have all been able to at least have a quick look at it. So just scrolling down. So this really is a how-to guide, but not a how-to guide uh, with all kinds of new things. No, we have basically looked at everything that's already out there and try to categorize uh, by step what is most relevant to you. This includes not just external sources, uh, and there are many external sources available, but also what is available at Sanfori for you to use. Now, this is really important for us to, to have you uh, a very good overview of what externally is available, but, but also internally with Amphoi, what is available to you. So just to walk you through the documents of what it looks like and how you can best use this. Uh, there is, again, a page on how to use this document, so please use this as well. Um, who should use this guide? So again, as I said before, it's really for anyone who's interested in or working on the SDGs. Um, it's if you want to move away from a risk approach, more towards creating impact. And also, if you're just starting out, you can absolutely use this document as well. And as I say here as well, companies who are already advanced on sustainability can still use this document and focus on linking their current work with the SDGs. Um, this is in this document because many of you already do such great work. Um, but you haven't necessarily mapped that against the SDGs. And this is where this document, as well as the mapping document, can come in really handy. So how have we um, lay, laid out this document? Um, every single step, we have a small explanation, a small explanation of what a step is, but also what you can do, with then the indication of specific resources that we felt are most relevant for that step. The resources are clustered into three different types. There's learning, so what type of training is available. There's further reading, so this, these are documents that are very relevant and useful for that specific step. And tools, what really practical tools are available to you. What we've also done is categorize the resources to help out those of you who don't have a lot of time spare to work on this is so you understand what is really basic, so what is really essential for you to read or do if it's a training, what is intermediate and what is advanced. So you can quickly scan and see what your intention is and map that against these categories. We've also added uh, categories to show what is uh, easy and quick, what is what will take you a little longer and what will require really uh, more time. So you can also pick and choose using those categories. So I'll just show you one or two uh, chapters so you can see how that builds up. Chapter one is of course step number one. It's understanding the, uh, the SDGs. Um, and here you can see that step one, understanding the SDGs. Uh, we do have a quick, very short description of what they are. But then as you can see here, it says resources available on the next page. You can see there's learning and further reading. So if you then scroll down, you can see here resources for step one, access to learning. There is of course the SDG compass. 
So that really is, it's not a, an online training, but it really is the go-to document. This is the one document everyone should absolutely read. We have indicated particularly the pages to go to. So we have pinpointed the pages uh, for you to, to read. Always you will have a, what is it? Which, what organization has delivered this document? What will you learn if it's a, a, a training? And the category. Um, I quickly will um, answer one question that has come in. We have um, a question if these documents are available in other languages. Um, these are fairly new documents, so we do not have them yet. Um, but absolutely, if we have enough interest from people from a certain um, language group, then we will absolutely uh, accommodate that. So if you could just let me let us know uh, what lang the language is. Uh, of course, if it's just one person, it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to uh, to do that. But if we know that there is enough interest for a certain language, then I will absolutely accommodate that. All right. So you can see here access to learning and further reading. So there's a few resources that we have um, identified for this specific step that might come in very handy. You can see here the SDGs explained for business and the SDG industry matrix. For chapter two, which is more about materiality, understanding what is really important for your company. And this is a very important point. Not every SDG will be relevant for you as a company. Um, you really need to understand what are the topics, the global issues that are relevant for you, for your business, and then link them to the SDGs. Uh, you're not, uh, businesses are not supposed to work on all the SDGs. Uh, the SDGs are a global set and every single actor has certain SDGs that they, they are more linked to. So again, here, there's a step. You can see that there are sub steps. So there's a, B, and C, and for each sub-step, again, you can see what type of resources are available, and then you can scroll down, and they are made available on the pages following, again, also with an indication of the sub-step, if uh, applicable. So there's access to learning here, there is further reading, and there are tools. Of course, there are tools. There's Amphori BSCI, and there's Amphori BPI. Okay, so this is the document and really again to reiterate, use it based on what you want to do with SDGs, based on where you are in your journey uh, on SDGs and just pick and choose the step that's most relevant for you. You can start from, from the start, from one and go all the way through to number five, but you can also skip a step if you're already more advanced. All right, so I'm going to again pause here for just a second to see if there are any questions on this document. Great. So there's one more slide I want to show you before I move on to Natasha from India. And that is this slide, just to give you a little um, taster of what we're working on to deliver throughout 2020. Um, what we've done in 2019, you can see on screen as well. We, we did have a introduction to SDG session at the Unleash Opportunity Conference last year. So that really was the kickoff, the starting point of work on SDGs. And then we had the technical paper and the guide we just looked at. For 2020, we will start looking at metrics and measurement, again, aligned with the platform. As you know, we're working on that. We will look at um, specific countries that are very active on uh, SDGs. So we already have India and Turkey today. Um, in this afternoon, it's going to be Turkey and France. Um, but also I know that Denmark, for example, there's a lot of movement there. So we'll be looking at certain countries where we know there's a lot happening and to see is there anything that we can support members who are either um, heavily sourcing from those countries or are actually based in those countries? We also will be doing some more focused work on specific SDGs that are most relevant to Amphoi, which no surprise are 5, 8, 12 and 13. 
so you will see some more work coming out specifically on these SDGs. We also would like to work uh, with you guys on your stories. And then do remember this this year in September, there will be a lot happening at UN level, not just because it's their 75th uh, anniversary, but also it's the fifth anniversary of the SDGs. And hopefully it is an anniversary um, and something to look forward to then the, the last 10 years. So this is just to give you a quick overview of uh, what you can expect um, during this year. So I would now like to hand it to uh, Natasha. Um, Natasha, if you can unmute yourself, please. I'm here. Thank you, Anushka. Wonderful. It's Thank all you your lovely. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for the uh, detailed uh, introduction and everything that you shared with us and the guide as well as the technical document. So I'm going to now say good morning to everyone and uh, warm greetings from India. Uh, and yes, I am actually really pleased to share with all of you India's approach with regards to the SDGs. Um, you know, what's, what's really good to know is that Agenda 2030 does not merely refer to the SDGs but it also includes the means to achieve the SDGs. And in this regards, India as a nation has ratified the SDGs and is committed to achieving the same. Even before the SDGs were formalized, India had taken active steps and measures for corporate social responsibility. In 2011, India released national voluntary guidelines on social environment and economic responsibilities of businesses, also known as the NVJs. This national framework on business responsibility is essentially a set of nine principles that offer businesses an Indian understanding and approach to inculcating responsible business conduct. Furthermore, in 2014, India became the first country in the world to place corporate giving into a law. Following a change in the company law in April 2014, Businesses with annual revenues of more than 10 billion rupees or 105 million pounds must give away 2% of their net profit to charity. Some of the areas that they can invest this money in include education, poverty, gender equality, and hunger. So these steps were already established in India early in the last decade. And then taking forward these efforts in 2019 India introduced two key drivers to achieve the SDGs and Anushka if I may request you yes thank you so uh, the two key drivers really are the national action plan on business and human rights which is a zero draft uh, to be formalized in 2020 so this was released last year and uh, this is based upon the UN guiding principles on business and human rights and it covers its three pillars Additionally, we have the national guidelines on responsible business conduct. And uh, in, in, in these guidelines, the national voluntary guidelines of 2011 have been updated to form the guidelines on responsible business conduct, providing a detailed framework for action with a macro vision. And they outline social, environmental and economic responsibilities of business, and they are directly linked to the SDGs. On this slide here, we've actually provided you with links to the detailed documents on both these drivers. So you can actually take a look um, and see what the Ministry has, of Corporate Affairs has um, in the plan, um, as well as what are the guidelines that are uh, uh, provided for businesses. Anushka, if you could help me with the next slide, please. Right. So as I said, the National Action Plan is actually, um, you know, based on the three uh, pillars of the UN Guiding Principles, as this was adopted by India in 2011. The first pillar is the state's duty to protect human rights. And uh, in, in this regards, there are, you know, uh, I, I highlight a few aspects of everything that's detailed. But here you have protecting the rights of workers, which is essentially very important. Uh, this is in addition to the legal frameworks and laws that are already existing in the country. Uh, there is a unified labor web portal, which is also known as Shram Suvidha portal, where employers now have to file their returns detailing their compliances with labor laws. 
Additionally, there's special protection for specific groups, in particular also women, where you have the uh, Prevention of Sexual Harassment Act uh, and law, which is mandatory, which uh, actually mandates the provision of an alternative grievance mechanism, also known as an internal complaints committee for um, uh, uh, anti-sexual harassment uh, in, in India. And uh, if, for all of you that don't know, um, FORI uh, is, has actually uh, an active uh, uh, program in this regards. In 2019, partnered with the Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, we rolled out 10 workshops on this particular topic. Um, and we trained over uh, 200 individuals across over 120 companies. Um, but in addition to, to this particular law, what the, uh, the state's duty also includes and covers our children, gender identity, persons with disabilities, scheduled caste, as well as scheduled tribes. Uh, and then again, there is the need for transparency and accountability. And over here, there is a mandate for financial transparency, as well as protection of human rights defenders. There's a policy for whistleblowers uh, and a law on the same, as well as a law for consumer protection and community consultation. We then move on to pillar two, which um, is the enterprise's responsibility to respect human rights. So as I already highlighted in 2011, we had the national voluntary guidelines and uh, in 2000 and uh, end 2018, but launched formally in 2019, we have the national guidelines on responsible business conduct. And I'll cover more of this in the upcoming slides. I'll move on to pillar three right now uh, to actually highlight the access to effective remedy. So there is a lot of, um, you know, um, set up and, and provisions that, that the government has, um, you know, already accounted for which include state-based judicial as well as quasi-judicial mechanisms to redress human rights violations. There's a national green tribunal. There are specialized commissions. There are labor courts, state-based non-judicial mechanisms, existence of a national human rights institution. There are available remedies under law. There is legal aid, access to information, promotion in public awareness, and other state-based grievance and complaints. On uh, the National Action Plan, we see next steps. Um, over here, uh, India is seeking to demonstrate its commitment um, towards the framework and the SDGs with the preparation of the National Action Plan. Uh, this does include a dialogue and engagement with all ministries and departments of government of India, the state governments, and relevant stakeholders. So this zero draft actually kickstarts the preparation of the NAP. And uh, in, as, as we speak, really, and in the coming months ahead, uh, there, is, there is the constitution of the working groups for the NAP. Uh, there are multi-stakeholder consultations that are already underway and will continue. And uh, really, there will be a comprehensive study to identify key priority areas for effective implementation of the UNGP. There's going to be time-bound time policy actions to and a clear uh, articulation of responsibilities uh, with regards to ministries, departments of government, as well as businesses. Now, uh, you know, another initiative which is alongside this NAP and that really uh, complements the same are these national guidelines that you see right now on your slide. Uh, there are nine thematic principles that are interdependent, interrelated, and non divisible. And businesses are urged to address them holistically. <laughs> What's really interesting is when you look at this uh, document in depth, each of the nine principles are mapped against the SDGs. So over here, you see the holistic implementation of SDGs, uh, which are guiding responsible business conduct in India. And uh, you can see, for example, if I look at, uh, you know, SDG 8, that um, Anushka spoke about previously, it is mapped to you know, principle two, principle three, five, and eight. And I will cover some of these principles in the next slide to give you an idea. So as we move ahead to the next slides, um, I highlight each principle just in brief to give you an idea of what they cover. So principle one states that businesses should conduct and govern themselves with integrity and in a manner that is ethical, transparent, and accountable. Principle two mandates businesses that the businesses should provide goods and services in a manner that is sustainable and safe. Principle three, 
businesses should respect and promote the well-being of all employees, including those in their value chains. And principle four states that businesses should respect the interests of and be responsible, responsive to all its stakeholders. As we move on to principle five, uh, here we say that business should respect and promote human rights. Principle six highlights businesses should respect and make efforts to protect and restore the environment. Principle seven, businesses, when engaging in influencing public and regulatory policy, should do so in a manner that is responsible and transparent. For principle eight, the highlights are that businesses should promote inclusive growth and equitable development. And principle nine, businesses should engage with and provide value to their consumers in a responsible manner. So in this regards, you know, we actually see that uh, India is, is taking very active steps, uh, you know, for the implementation of SDGs, uh, for the, uh, um, you know, uh, providing a guidance uh, and, and also providing effective tools uh, for businesses, for stakeholders um, uh, to, to really uh, achieve the SDGs along with works on grievance mechanisms. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them at this stage. Thank you so much, Natasha, for, for this and providing the context in India. That was super helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I don't see any questions come in, so I'm just going to um, ask Elif to uh, take the floor and give us the context of Turkey. Uh, hello everyone again, this is Elif uh, from Mom40. I'm working as a social programs expert, just joined the team. I'm very happy, very excited. Uh, so uh, I'd like to present you the situation uh, of the uh, of SDGs in Turkey as Turkey is one of the five top, uh, top five resource sourcing countries uh, with uh, 2026 producers actually within the Mom40 uh, VSCI system and uh, Apart from that, uh, Turkey with its like uh, 80 million uh, population is one of the biggest and economically growing uh, country in the European and Middle East regions and the MENA regions uh, as, we, as, as sometimes it's called as well. And uh, so therefore like it, it's gr like growing, uh, like economically growing targets, uh, Turkey, the country has been in shift actually for the last 15 years, we may say, with changing its public policies in terms of like social, economic and environmental issues, which really uh, like this, this shift has a really, really impact on the business, civil society, uh, NGOs and, and, and the public institutions as well as academy uh, and in the universities as well. And the Turkey has been a committed partner actually with the UN agencies, like the UNDP started working in the 60s in Turkey with infrastructure uh, projects, more like uh, like the building roads and uh, building one of the main universities in Ankara as well. So, and Turkey Turkey has in line with the with the, with, with the UN agencies and the the, the development uh, projects for almost like 50 years. And uh, and it's 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 continuing with the with the it's continued actually with the Millennium Development Goals in the in the 90s and the early 2000s as well as with the with the, with the SDGs right now. But uh, I would like to touch upon the role of business and private sector in all these development uh, processes that Turkey has been uh, going through. Uh, so uh, actually like this the, the the role of business and the, the role of private sector uh, has shifted in the in the 2000s so we can say that in 2005 actually with this the concept of uh, corporate social responsibility came to the picture and many big companies large companies uh, have had actually developed some uh, projects that that can uh, increase that can uh, enhance the lives of like women children or like like some some other communities uh, in church but this was more like kind of an external supporter so their position was more like kind of like supporting the communities through different project models and not really kind of taking the developmental and the kind of the principles of SDGs or the previous MDGs in, in, into their uh, in their own business models actually and uh, 
but this has also shifted very very much uh, changed with the SDGs. So SDGs has a huge impact in this sense with the, with the business uh, organizations in Turkey. And Turkey has a quite strong uh, uh, business uh, umbrella organizations, which really they all actually uh, they have been, uh, taken SDGs very very seriously, and they have uh, built up some platforms that they really take up the SDGs uh, into their uh, business models, into their uh, partners, into their actually uh, they try to implement in the supply chain. But uh, I'd like to also like say that. Turkey's uh, economy is dominated by SMEs, which uh, BSCI and we all uh, uh, we, we all come to the picture here as well. Uh, so SMEs actually make up over 90 uh, percent of all businesses, contribute to the two thirds of employment, and overall uh, of total value added. So the role of SMEs in the Turkish like development. Uh, economically, socially, as well as environmentally, is, is, is a key actually. And uh, that I will come to this uh, later, but just to remind you that uh, around 40% uh, percent of SMEs operate in the wholesale and retail trade. And another key sector among uh, SMEs is manufacturing. Although manufacturing SMEs only make up around 12% uh, of all SMEs, their contribution to the total value added 30%. So this is like kind of the, where we are standing in terms of SMEs, business, large companies, and the, 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 the whole picture. If you look at Turkey in general performance, uh, SDGs performance, we can see that Turkey is uh, doing quite well in some areas, but we need to develop some, some uh, other uh, other issues. Um, uh, as, as a country who has uh, also taken uh, had taken some actions on uh, MDGs, actually, Turkey has been quite good in the, in the health sector, in education, uh, so and the zero uh, hunger uh, targets. But yet we need some uh, actions in, in other sectors. But overall, uh, this index is, uh, came from Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And you can see the all countries here. Uh, as one of the OECD countries, Turkey's index score is uh, 68.5. But the regional average score is 77.7. .7. So you can look at the, like this numbers later if you want in the index. And these indexes gives actually like these kind of indexes give you the, the bigger picture in terms of where the countries are actually standing SDGs. And you can use these indexes for your own businesses as well, like like here. So you can really choose where you want to do as uh, Anushka just said earlier and prioritization. This is like the same for the countries. I mean, countries have priorities. So they are obliged to follow all the SDGs, but they can prioritize and they can uh, make national action plans, as we just uh, heard from uh, from India as well. And uh, for instance, we are quite good at in the quality of education, but we need to we need to do some more in the climate change, as many of the other countries. And the number six in peace, justice, and monitoring. But we need to do, especially like Turkey has been working on right now, the gender equality. Uh, affordable and clean energy, especially municipalities, along with the uh, SMEs in the local uh, context. Decent work and economic growth with refugee crisis. Uh, this is another key issue in Turkey right now. This is like cross-cutting issue. And as well as like uh, reduce inequalities at the regional and the national and the local level. So this is like the SDG general performance. We have some other indexes, some other reports that um, uh, that uh, other institutions also publishing. The main partner, the main responsible partner in Turkey for the SDGs is the Strategy and Budget Office under the presidency. And they have uh, closely worked with, uh, work with the UNDP and other, uh, all other UN agencies, as well as other ministries, actually. All the U SDGs are assigned to a specific ministry in Turkey. So they are, it's, there's a quite good collaboration in terms of uh, this um, and also uh, UNDP is, a, is a one of the pioneering partner uh, in Turkey that are following uh, SDGs performances and developing 
uh, developing some some kind of projects, but as well as programs like big programs and uh, the poverty, eradicating poverty in all forms of dimensions, accelerate structural transformation and build resilience to shock and crisis. These are the top uh, three main uh, priority settings that the UNDP Turkey has been focusing on for the last five years, we could say, and they have projects on poverty, governance, resilience, environment, energy and gender specifically and UNDP Turkey has a very good website on this and you can go and check and uh, we have another network so as I said Turkey is a good in terms of the network and so like number 17 SDGs has been quite well achieved in the sense so Business Council for Sustainable Development of Turkey with a total turnover corresponding to more than 50 15% of GDP and Turkey's 62 leading companies which employ 350,000 people are members of this council. So we're talking about big uh, networks and councils and what they do, I'll come to that briefly, very shortly. And another uh, platform which is recently launched, like kind of this month, like last week launched, is Business for Goals <clears throat> with two uh, main uh, umbrella organizations from Turkey. The first one is Turk Confet. Turk Confet is Turkish Enterprise and Business Confederation. So it's a confederation of SMEs in Turkey. It's the main, main uh, umbrella organization for SMEs from all regions in Turkey. And it's, it's a very strong uh, organization. And TUSIAT, TUSIAT is the Turkish Industry and Business Association. It's a very, very powerful uh, organization as uh, as well. Both of them actually represent more than 40,000 companies, 244 associations. So uh, they really, really, if they want to like change something or shift uh, something, and they do, uh, they are really uh, important partners. So partnership is, is key in Turkey as uh, well. I mean, as you understand. Another uh, organization is Istanbul International Center for Private Sector and Development. They have a very like good web page. I'm not going to uh, uh, like go in details, but they have a accelerator project that uh, HDG impact accelerator. So they mainly calculate, they mainly measure the impact of SDGs in different different areas and uh, how actually private sector can contribute to uh, this acceleration more on the refugee uh, integration uh, projects actually they may mostly check on this there is a very interesting uh, project that i'd like to talk to you about this climate uh, change report in 2017 and here actually especially big companies they are very uh, keen on to integrate uh, climate change into their business strategies and uh, almost 92 percent of companies integrated climate change in their own business models and they really um, they really take measures in in the uh, reduction of the carbon emissions and they really work on the renewable energy consumption and one project is quite good with from Ezajiba she is one of the leading companies I'll just uh, just show it to you and other partners, UN agencies, UN Women Turkey, UNICEF, ILO, they all work together. And another key uh, actor is municipalities. Municipalities are quite strong in Turkey and very well uh, kind of uh, organized in terms of service provision for, for communities, for, for people. Uh, but if, if, if you can see different kinds of projects uh, with, with SMEs uh, located in, 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 in the cities, municipalities are key partners as well. So these are this is like the main partners on SDGs. And uh, I will continue with, with, with Business for Goals. Business for uh, Goals actually is a platform. It's the first uh, platform that's, I mean, now the understanding with with, uh, with with like sustainable development in Turkey, it's shifting from CSR, corporate social responsibility approach to collective approach. So, I mean, we are in the realization uh, point that we cannot really solve the developmental issues, whether from economic, social or uh, 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 environmental uh, problems. We cannot solve these problems just with with projects. So we need broader programs. We need to be like localized. Mm -hmm. So in this platform, actually, sector-based development approach is taken, and they really look for creating value chain with subcontractors and partners. And these are the three main uh, focus areas that they actually 
decided to work on. Uh, future fit for SMEs is a, is a key here in, in, in here. And with that, uh, there is just a recent report published uh, in Turkey the landscape assessment report on resilience of SMEs. SMEs are, as I said, the key uh, in Turkey in terms of the production, in terms of uh, in terms of the supply chain. Turkey, Turkey is a highly uh, Turkey. The, the main issue in Turkey is earthquakes, actually, in terms of the natural natural disasters. And uh, more than uh, 95 of the country lies in one of the most active earthquake and landslide regions in the world, and 50% of the population lives in these areas, actually. So we did, uh, I mean, I also worked in this project before. We did this landscape assessment report, and the fact that the, the, the impact of these natural, natural disasters on the SMEs are actually very much related to the supply chain. I'll give you some examples, for instance. Um, we 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 had some uh, like we had 99 uh, earthquake which actually uh, I mean impacted like three uh, 30 thousand businesses were damaged and uh, many many of the SMEs or around like 80 percent of the SMEs are uh, closed down in this in this uh, with this earthquake and uh, the, the 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 economic impact has uh, was was huge actually and in the in one actually we had another earthquake and there actually around 50000 businesses were damaged and in some uh, rains and hails and floods we have been actually uh, having uh, in turkey uh, they are damaging the productions and uh, like in order for instance hazelnut production industries were heavily damaged transportation infrastructures can be damaged and buildings are very much uh, damaged in these uh, by these natural natural uh, disasters uh, floods also uh, in 2018 uh, in december uh, floods caused uh, my heavy rainfall have affected refugee camps, for instance, which uh, which actually another uh, another uh, picture of the issue. And uh, the thing is, like um, when 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 it comes to natural disasters and their impacts, I mean they impact the SMEs, and once the SMEs are impacted, the, the whole business uh, process uh, like has been very like uh, unfortunately dramatically uh, impacted. So, and not just the businesses, but also people, communities living there, and the recovery from this takes years. That's that's kind of another issue that we should take in our minds. So, private sector, like all the organizations, along with uh, private sector and other uh, civil society organizations, can ensure that the infrastructure and public utilities, such as roads, energy supply, water system, telecommunications, can be built to high standards so that these kind of uh, impact can be at least reduced. And some other projects are also um, going on in Turkey, uh, but I'll, I'll, I can uh, send you some more information. These are the uh, projects that have been uh, implemented in Turkey right now. There's this document uh, Turkey's uh, uh, published, Turkey's National uh, Voluntary Report that is online. Actually, I'll, I'll send you the link uh, after this uh, webinar. So each project targeted specific SDG sub targets here. So as we have been saying from the beginning, actually, you don't need to focus like all focus on all the 17 uh, goals. But uh, for instance, if you want to work on the work on the education, there are education related sub uh, targets, which, for instance, the My Sister project is about the uh, empowerment of women uh, in terms of coding technologies, in terms of uh, especially refugee women and refugee girls integration, along with uh, local authorities and local SMEs, so that they can employ it in this uh, in, in this in this uh, area. So it's very much related with number 10, number 5, number 8, number 17 as well. So, I mean, you, you can look up these uh, projects in details, but some projects are in the business plan, internally, uh, like, owned by the companies, and some people, some projects are more uh, in, in, in the, like, uh, supporting the communities, but these can both work, actually, for you, depending on what you really want to achieve and what where you want to go with, with within the SDGs. And thank you very much for listening to me. If you have any questions, I'm ready to yeah, reply. Thank you so much, Edith.
this was a, a really great uh, context setting for Turkey, all the efforts that are being done, but also the plans yeah. for for the immediate future, actually, yeah. Yeah. and not even the, the longer term, but really what is going to happen yeah. as of now. So that is really super useful. Yeah. So I don't see any questions come in, so I'm just going to um, close this webinar with just one more thing. Um, of course, we can have all the documents we want with all the technical elements and all the guidances, but really what is helpful for everyone is to hear from others, to hear the stories of people who are working with, on, across the SDGs, um, people who are having success, but also people who have challenges. So we really would like to start um, capturing these stories, capturing the challenges, capture the success, the questions, and seek uh, support in this big network that we have within Amphori. Um, we can deliver all of the tools and, and all of the, the services and the, the resources, but really we would like to call upon you all to see if we can deliver also this active network among you to, and, and to support each other with your stories. So we have created um, an email address, yoursdgstory.org, and we would really encourage you to send your stories there. And we will uh, find ways to deliver these stories within the network and hopefully to start dialogue between yourselves on specific SDGs, but also um, making sure that people have access to, to stories to understand what, uh, what is a success? What, what can we also do? Or what should you absolutely not do? Yeah. Uh, take lessons from the, the things that have not worked well. Yeah. Um, so really, uh, if you have stories, and if you just want to share with us what your favorite SUG is, do so <laughs> as well. We'd, we'd be uh, happy to hear. Uh, so one address, your SDG story at amphori.org. And that concludes this webinar. Uh, we uh, would like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as I explained earlier, we will be doing a lot more on SDGs uh, this year and, of course, in the next decade. We fully support a decade of action. Uh, we do have a dedicated web page um, at Amphori for all of this work, so don't hesitate to visit this from time to time as we will be updating this web page as work uh, gets uh, published. So I would like to thank you all for your attention. If you have further questions, please do send them on and we'd be happy to uh, respond. So thank you all, have a great day. And thank you, Natasha, for uh, joining this webinar and uh, giving us the India perspective. Until the next time, goodbye. Bye.